on the artist side, like one bit of advice is just take your time while doing these campaigns. It's going to be so much more beneficial. And you'll also learn a lot about your music and where uh, this fits in terms of like the genre spectrums, you know, um, and also it can open doors in terms of insights as well, you know, could, you know, different fans, you know, you could be like, okay, sweet. I'm actually fitting into a lot of these playlists. Maybe I should start applying for gigs more in this direction, this genre direction than what I was doing before. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's a very beneficial process. It's a, it's a lengthy process, but yeah, um, being objective and doing his research and doing your due diligence um, really pays dividends in the end. Right, right. I can definitely see that, like paying off after you do all the work. Right now, you have it. Right, you don't have to do that research. You just stay mm-hmm. in the bag and continue to create. And I hadn't thought about even thinking about how your gigs and the rest of your branding might. Change Absolutely. on what you're getting from the fa- playlist feedback that's dope uh, i mean along those same lines right in terms of artist accountability because i think these are really important subjects you mentioned bought it playlist um, and not no one being able to guarantee a specific number so it's 2022 not i don't like the date interviews or whatever but like it is and I feel like that message has been out so long, yet I still have conversations, right, with artists, uh, whether it's for me to work for them or they're asking for my advice on a decision they're making. And many people still say, like, well, can you guarantee this or what's going to be my return on ad spend or how much money am I going to make back from getting on these playlists? All right. There's still that mentality. And I, I get it that you like you say, hey, I want to take this seriously and treat her like a business. And you've heard from all these other business conversations outside of music, right? That you should be looking at these types of metrics to make sure it's worth your investment. I get it, right? But yeah. I, that's things everybody pretty much acknowledges like the music industry is a little bit flipped. It's a little bit different, right? So, Slightly, man, yeah. <laughs> so one, I, I want to ask you, why do you think well, no, why can no, nobody guarantee um, a, a amount of streams uh, from a playlisting standpoint? And then I want to get a little bit more into just the music industry and how it works from your perspective. But, um, but mm-hmm. yeah, why do they, can you not guarantee streams? Um, I think the, the simple answer is, is because they fluctuate, you know? Um, like if you have real listeners on your playlists, like the process of like, curating and building a brand and building out these playlists so you you know the the way you get these listeners is you really put a a comprehensive list that works together of amazing music and selections however you've got to get these people coming back like every time you've got you make an update you know it's not just like it the one-time thing they're they're returning customers on the curator side Mm -hmm. so there's that human element that just doesn't make it like guaranteed in that sense so if someone says to you, like, oh, we can guarantee over a 30-day period 40,000 streams, um, and they're saying, I think the main thing around that, like, is because there is data to support, you know, estimates, and you look at your Spotify for artists, and um, you, the curators do have insights along these lines. But if they're like, okay, pay me $20, I can get you placed on a playlist that's going to guarantee you this not in the terms of like feedback or terms of like a submission, but in terms of like pay for placement, which is payola. This is when the red flags are waved. And this is when like, okay, this is all basically a big sale scam. It's just not, it's just something you can't guarantee. And like when you start adding up the red flags, it's just, yeah, it's something that it becomes quite obvious what's legitimate and what you can avoid. you know so yeah it's exactly. yeah that's yeah to sum it up it's the human ele- the human element of it mixed also with the other sort of supporting layers of how the submission process is done for example whether it is just paying straight up for a placement or paying for feedback from a curator or for a submission so what do you say to the artist that says how am I going to get my money back from this playlisting? 
I would say in terms of money, I think that's not just about playlisting. I think that's the state of, uh, you know, streaming platforms and the royalty rates in general. I think there's a bigger issue um, at hand with regards to that. You know, it's it's you realistically, unless you're able to drive um thousands, like hundreds of thousands to millions of streams off playlisting campaign which just to put into context is most likely not going to happen mm-hmm. really not going to happen um yeah i think putting into context like that i think you're never going to necessarily make your money back like one for one or be in profit from a playlisting campaign what playlisting campaigns are is obviously about like marketing and promotion and like finding new fans and it's about having an objective is the way I like to look at it. So when you're going into a playlisting campaign, you can just look at streams as an objective. But what's the, the most sort of like, I guess, tangible thing is like seeing your Spotify followers going up because then that's getting the people within your ecosystem. So when you have your next release, if they start following you, they're going to they're, you're going to come up on their release radar. You know, um, it's also to start to learn about like where your music works it's all about the analytics and insights that are provided through these campaigns um so yeah i wouldn't it's, it's an investment obviously and it's unfortunate that it doesn't tend to be like a one-to-one or like even a profitable return but the insights you can gain from playlisting um and the knock-on effect it can have let's say you do a playlisting campaign you then hit the right uh, playlist that then sort of starts triggering a load of other playlist ads you then finding new fans. You then get picked up by the spot of our algorithm. You then get added into the different, um, yeah, the different um, playlist by Spotify, and then you know, then you might get picked up by uh, a manager or a label because you're in like the fresh finds, for example. I know many artist managers who are in that fresh finds like uh, every week, just scouting through. And I know many artists who have also been signed because of their songs being in fresh finds. So it's more again to sum it up it's not about the in my opinion the the sort of return in profits it's about what you can get uh, analytics wise insights wise and also if you do hit that golden like campaign like taking the opportunities that sort of come that way and opening the doors that possibly wouldn't have been there if you hadn't conducted uh, the campaign in the first place nice nice that's a great great answer to that um it's way better than what I tell people. <laughs> <laughs> what do you tell people? <laughs> it's just, it, it just doesn't make sense. I really don't go far beyond the fact that like a one-to-one return early on when you're investing in your music just shouldn't be expected. Absolutely. That's a more of a long-term investment before you start to see a return. And once you hit that exponential curve, right, you have the buildup from any type of campaign, multiple types of campaigns, right? It's not even a one-off campaign, most likely that you're going to do. You're not likely not going to do one campaign or even two campaigns before you start seeing money back. You're going to, it's going to be a culmination of campaigns invested over time, some paid, some not paid, that builds the audience and gets you in a position where you can then monetize, right? So Absolutely. it's pretty much that. But, um, but I love, especially the insights in the way that there's, you can, leverage opportunities that come from playlisting. I, I like how you broke that down. 